after Jesus was raised and they saw him and touched him when they heard him speak and when they ate fish with him on the beach and walked with him, they understood they were beginning, it was like a rose that was starting to flower. And their understanding of the whole thing began to just kind of blossom and bloom like that beautiful rose does here in about two or three weeks. Does it do that in two or three weeks? Four weeks? <laughs> but they understood, they understood that because Jesus was raised and something else was happening to them too. That their lives, their very lives were being raised also. Their hopes, their ability to trust, their ability to forgive a human being who has wronged you and spoken ill of you and have tortured your dreams. That the ability to trust and to love and to even forgive an enemy was also raised up to on that day and the days following. They would never be the same men and women. Never. It wasn't possible. Not if you really knew and understood that Jesus had truly risen as he said he would time and time and time again. Yes, he always talked about his suffering and death. But yes, he always added, but hold on. On the third day, well, they clung to the suffering. Not one of them clung to that word. Not until much, much later. But brothers and sisters in Christ living east of Eden, if you will, living this side of eternity, you know, it's pretty rough for us sometimes out here. This side of time and space is pretty rough for us human beings. And it's true that as we live out our lives as pilgrims, which is what we are, who we are. We're on a journey, on a journey home. We talked about it. It's true that there will be times when life wears us down and we become very drawn down. When our faith that seems so strong one day, oh, so strong, the next day, poof, it's gone. Or seems so, at least very weak the next day. The fact is, there will come those times when we will ask, probably privately, but maybe even verbally too, to another human being, we will ask, you know, I know, I know, but would you tell me again what happened on the third day, and how should I think about that? How should I think about that resurrection? Does it apply to me? Tell me about that. What does it mean for me and for the ones that I love? Would you please tell me again? So there was this man, middle-aged. His father died, you know, years back, 10, 11 years ago. His mother lived in a home for the elderly because she was very, very elderly. She'd gone forward. That's the way the Bible puts it. She'd gone forward, you know, many, many years. And she was a Christian woman. Hold on to that. She was a Christian woman. The Lord had, in fact, kept her in the one true faith all of her years. What a blessing. The greatest blessing of all is to be kept in the one true faith until that last dying hour. But she was very old now. She was very tired and worn out. And she'd become very anxious about things, especially about what would happen to her when she died. We're talking about a Christian woman here with very, very strong, vibrant faith. But she'd become very anxious about this kind of like John the Baptist, who sent his friends to find Jesus to ask him. This is John the Baptist now asking Jesus through his friends. You're the one, right? There is no other to wait for, right? You're the one sent by God. Am I wrong about that? Am I right about that? I know. But I am cold, and I am hungry, and I am alone, and I am so tired. And I want to know, please tell me again, are you the one? 
like the man who cried out, Lord, I believe you, but I need help with my unbelief. So this mother was kind of like that, kind of like that. She was anxious about all of this, and she was asking her son, I know that Jesus is the one. Son, I know it, but tell me again, would you please tell me again, is he the one? And how will it go for me when I die? Well, what would you say to your mother or your father or your husband or your wife or your son or your daughter? He didn't know what to say. And, oh, by the way, he, he was a pastor. And he didn't know exactly what to say. It was his mother, after all. No religious, pietistic cliches are going to do it right here. Nope, not at all. But he did say this. He thought about it. How am I going to express this to my mother? I need to say something to her. So he said this. Well, Mom, I do not know exactly, but when I think about these things, I think about a circus. Remember, Mom, the time when you took me to the circus and we watched the trapeze artists climb higher and higher and higher and there was no net beneath them and everybody looked on in hushed silence. Remember that, Mom? Well, Mom, there were two men, two men who climbed up there. One was a flyer and the other was a catcher. And remember, Mom, it was the flyer who grabbed hold of that little bar with his hands while the catcher on the other side, side of the circus tent, hung upside down on his trapeze by his knees with his hands completely free. And it was, Mom, remember, it was always the catcher who had the strong hands. And then there they went, swinging back and forth and back and forth until there came that moment when the flyer just let go. And there was nothing he could do. He was, in a sense, a very real sense, helpless up there. It was all up to the catcher to reach out quickly with two strong hands and grab hold of him and bring him down safely. Mom, I kind of think of it that way, that when we die, we let go of everything. And in a very real sense, we will be helpless. There will be no net. Nothing to keep us from falling except for the hands of Jesus. Mom, his hands are very, very strong. And they have nail marks in them, Mom, remember? And so the instant you die, you let go, and Jesus will be right there, Mom right there with two strong hands that will reach out for you and catch you and bring you safely to his side. There was this uh, French philosopher, his name was Blaise Pascal, really, really smart guy, really quick on the uptake. He was a mathematician, lived in the 17th century. But, um, you know, he was a pretty hard guy. You know, over the years, that can happen to men. That they kind of get, you know, if they have nothing else to cling on to, like Christ and His forgiving love and His resurrection, it can happen to us men very easily that we get angry and bitter as we age. That can happen to us. Well, Blaise Pascal, <laughs> whew, just a really hard guy, really bitter and always angry. Not much fun to be around. Nope, not him. But on November 23rd, 1654, he sat down and he wrote something on a piece of paper. He showed no one what he had written. He folded that paper and sewed it, sewed it into the inside of his jacket. That piece of paper was not found until nine years after he had died. And this is what he wrote. O God of Abraham, O God of Isaac, O God of Jacob, not the God of the philosophers, not that. 
Not the God of the learned, not that. Certainty, certainty, feeling, joy, peace. O God of Jesus Christ, forgetfulness of the world in everything except God, grandeur of the human soul, joy, 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 O tears of joy. These are the words that he kept very close to his heart. That's where he had sown those words, right next to his heart. And they are the very same words, brothers and sisters in Christ, that have been uttered by all of those millions upon millions of human beings who let go of everything, including pride, and have come to know with certainty, not crossing your fingers, oh, I hope everything works out for me. No. No. Certainty that nothing in this life brings joy and peace to a human heart ultimately but God himself in Christ Jesus. That's how central Jesus Christ is to every human being. And so as we care, you know, for one another in this life and encourage one another in this life, and we need to do that, we're going through a life here. We can't do it alone. There may come a time when we're called upon to speak a word of comfort to one who asks us. Maybe not in this way, but they will ask us maybe. The third day, you know, the cross, Jesus' birth, I know the narrative, I know the story, but will you please tell me again? And so what will it be for you? Singing a verse or reading a verse of... Abide with me, or I know that my Redeemer lives. The Lord's Prayer. Reading a psalm or part of one. Psalm 27. Pretty great. You know what? It doesn't much matter. It just doesn't much matter. Because they all say the same thing. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. That's not spin. That's reality. For the day will come for all of us, my friends, when we will let go of everything and everyone. And we will find ourselves not falling, but being caught by the catcher, capital C, bringing us safely into his kingdom, the kingdom that has no limit and has no end. And how can we be certain, as Pascal was certain, Well, we've, we've said it a dozen times already. Because he is risen, of course. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And amen.